Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Spider-Man No Way Home rewrote reality inside of the MCU in a way that I'm not sure we're all fully appreciating yet. Yes, we are all crying, but later on in the bathroom we're like, oh wait, uh, how does that make sense? And also, should I get that checked? Uh, I'm referring, of course, to Doctor Strange's memory wipe spell that makes the whole world forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, essentially unwinding Mysterio and J. Jonah Jameson's unmasking him, while also erasing Peter himself from the memories of MJ and Ned and Happy Hogan and everybody. So how was reality changed exactly? What exactly does each character remember? Well, after giving myself enough time to process this film and uh, get parts of me checked, I got you covered. Here we go, Doctor Strange's memory wipe spell explained. <laughs> So Doctor Strange calls this spell the Runes of Cough Call, which Strange had previously used to make Wong forget about a full moon party in Kamartash. What happened at that party, I wonder? What full moons was Wong showing everybody? But while Wong's memory of that event had faded, the event itself still happened. Such is the case with Peter Parker. The world has forgotten that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, but there is still a Spider-Man. It's just to everyone else, he's now a masked mystery figure once more. But the problem is, in order for this memory wipe to be plausible, reality itself must also have been warped physically for there to be no record, public, or private of Peter's history as Spider-Man. Like, you can't have MJ now thinking, duh, that creeper from the donut shop left a bunch of shirtless selfies on my phone. The screenwriters acknowledge this confusion in an interview with Variety. To questions as to whether Peter Parker has a social security number now, the writers grimaced and said they had discussed it and that they considered using the visual of characters fading from photographs like in Back to the Future to show reality warping. Co-writer Chris McKenna said, Obviously, some sort of magical redaction has occurred. At the end of all this, we didn't want a lot of people trying to do magical math in their head. Sorry, buddy, you made a great nerd movie with multiverse logic, and this is inevitable. But according to McKenna, people had these experiences, but they start forgetting the person they knew, but they were still affected by the events that happened. So from this helpful explanation and from evidence in the film, I think we can derive the four rules for Doctor Strange's final memory wipe spell in Spider-Man no way home. Rule one, everyone still alive who knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man no longer remembers. Rule two, everyone still alive who had any relationship whatsoever with Peter Parker now views him as a stranger. Rule three, reality itself has been rewritten to alter all physical records of Peter Parker into a new replacement history. This includes photos, newspapers, videos, social media, public displays, academic records, and state records. The writers use the Back to the Future photo fade example, but Harry Potter fans could also look at this as Hermione's sad obliviate spell in Deathly Hallows, which gaslit Mr. Granger and Catelyn Stark erasing Hermione from now very awkwardly framed photos. And rule four, Spider-Man as a public figure still exists in the historical record, but he was never unmasked. Specifically, people who knew Peter Spider-Man Link do not remember a blurry face or an alternate face under that mask. They only have memories of Spider-Man as a masked Spider-Man. And any parts of those memories that involve their relationship with Peter were replaced with different memories. So I know that's a lot, but let's go character by character to see how this works. For Peter Parker, all of his memories remain intact as they were, except now his external identity has been reset. Like we see that he is now studying for the GED, which is a test that you take as an alternative to a high school diploma so that you can apply for college or qualify for basic jobs. This means that Peter's academic record at Midtown School of Science and Technology has been erased. And not just from people's memories, there is no physical record of any Peter Parker at Midtown High. However, Peter is renting an apartment in Manhattan for which you need a state ID at least. So presumably reality has been rewritten in a specific way so that Peter Parker still has all these basic things, but his academic history was so intertwined with his life as Spider-Man that the spell just kind of pulled a replace all there. Now, when we talk about Peter Parker's friends, it's important to note that Peter already had a habit of ghosting various events so that Ned, MJ, and the rest all have plenty of unaltered memories without Peter in them. Like at Homecoming, Peter bailed from Liz's party, he bailed from the academic decathlon in DC, from the Homecoming dance, the field trip in Infinity War, and several points in their Euro trip in Far From Home. For most Midtown students, it's sad to admit it, but these were mostly Peter-free memories already. Ned Leeds certainly has some Peter-free memories from the many times Peter ghosted. He just no longer really knows why he was alone there. And if you were to listen carefully, Ned even says he built that Lego Death Star mostly without
without Peter's help. You wanna build it tonight? I can't tonight, I got to start. Mm -hmm. Stark internship. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Boys got that internship. I'll knock out the basic bones of the Death Star in my place, and, and then I'll come by afterwards, because for the most part, the difficulty... But still, Ned spent quite a bit of time with his best bud, like in class, at lunch, on field trips, all experiences that Ned must now remember as either being alone or with someone else. Hopefully with someone else. Unless he wants to be alone. There's nothing wrong with being an introvert. Like in particular, for Ned, that crisis at the Washington Monument, now that he would have no memory of Peter Parker giving him that explosive Chitauri tech, this was caused by some mysterious blast from his backpack and thank God that spider guy just happened to be there. Ned's memory of their homecoming dance was really just him with his academic decathlon buds, as we saw with that photo of Ned and MJ, just the two of them from that homecoming dance without Peter, a photo that appeared throughout Spider-Man No Way Home. Twice, in fact, we saw it once in Peter's bedroom, and then again in the background of MJ's bedroom. This prop might have been part of that scrapped Back to the Future photo fade plan that the writers discussed. And then in Spider-Man Far From Home, Ned originally was part of that seat switcheroo that resulted in Peter sitting with Mr. Harrington, Brad sitting with MJ, Ned sitting with Betty Brant. Without Peter requesting that, Ned might not have ended up sitting with Betty and might never have had that summer fling with her. But otherwise, his Euro trip is now marked by random attacks by elemental monsters revealed as weaponized drones, interferences by Mysterio, and from that night monkey guy, who knows if Ned still would have improvised that name, and then of course Spider-Man in London, but also would have had a random memory of him fainting in his hotel room in Venice. Now, as we saw in the No Way Home ending, Ned, without Peter in his life, got into MIT and has stayed friends with MJ. He probably still has his hidden sorcerer talent since he told Doctor Strange this was something his Nana mentioned was in his family. This was something independent of his relationship with Peter. But now that Ned has no memory of discovering Peter as Spider-Man, he never dropped that finished Death Star Lego set, so he would never miss the memory of him and Peter rebuilding it later in Homecoming. However, Peter still possesses that Lego Palpatine at the end of No Way Home. He also possesses a sewing machine to make his new suit that looks a lot like the one we saw in Ned's Nana's living room. So who knows? Peter might have found a way to restore his buddy's memories. We won't know that until the next film. Now, when I'm not breaking stuff down, I'm out running errands, I'm out walking the dog, and the last thing I want to worry about is my earbuds falling out. Well, with some optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. Raycon's everyday earbuds have optimized gel tips for the perfect fit. It makes them comfortable and they don't budge. Thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Listen to my music while I feed this dog. Look, I bent over and everything and they didn't pop out. What a great fit. Darling. <laughs> Raycon's everyday earbuds look, feel, and sound better than ever. They offer eight hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. That's long enough to listen to all of Hamilton in like two and a half times, if you're into that kind of thing. Raycon's are priced so that you can get quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands. It's no wonder Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 48,000 five star reviews and they come with a 45 day happiness guarantee. So click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash newrockstars to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. And thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this episode. But on to Peter's girlfriend, Michelle Jones Watson. She was certainly one of those proud loners that I talked about, nothing wrong with that. She was often seen sitting by herself, reading and doodling. She actually admitted that she didn't really have any friends. Because I don't have any friends. My friends call me MJ. I thought you didn't have any friends. I didn't. MJ would have stayed on that same path. She did by herself score the winning point in the academic decathlon in DC. And then shortly after she directed the mysterious Spider-Man to save her friends in the Washington Monument. All that still would have played out the same. However, there was no Peter Parker in her class to fuel her suspicion that this kid's recurring disappearances and Spider-Man's coincidental appearances at the same time were connected. So MJ never would have found out who he was on her own, but in her academic career, she still would have become the academic decathlon team captain. And she probably still would have ended up at MJ. MIT. Now, MJ, like Ned, was heavily involved with Peter's crisis in No Way Home, but this spell likely erased everything they did alongside Peter to capture the multiverse men and to connect him with his alternate Peters. Now, when that spell subsided and these two just would have found themselves on Liberty Island, they must have at least remembered being part of all that since MJ still had that bump on her head at the end of the movie. But I assume that they assumed that they were visiting the Statue of Liberty. They got sucked into some crisis with at least one masked Spider-Man, but a masked Spider-Man because MJ may remember falling from that scaffolding, but I imagine she now remembers the Spider-Man who caught her was masked. 
asked. And that is a very important point because Ned, MJ, the rest cannot remember any blur or alternate face under the Spider-Man mask because then that would be associated with the reality where Spider-Man was unmasked and then scandalized that then left them with a guilt by association that doomed them with MIT, which is not the case here since they got into MIT in a world where no one knows who Peter Parker is. However, despite her brief romance with Peter Parker getting erased from her memory, the spell did not erase that broken Black Dahlia necklace that Peter bought her in Venice and gave to her in London. She continues to wear it. The necklace itself doesn't on its face reference Peter in any way, so she may just continue to wear it as a reflection of her love for broken things. I actually like it better broken. But come on, the true deeper significance of this necklace is that this is a bit of Eternal Sunshine-esque symbolism of love's persistence beyond memory, the way that our hearts fill the vacant corners of our lives with the person we know is out there looking for us. So once you're done crying, let's move on to Flash Thompson. Flash's Flashpoint tell-all book certainly would have been erased from existence. Now, I'm not sure how pivotal that book was to his getting into MIT, considering that admission officer totally rolled her eyes at it, and really, people with actual associations with Peter Parker got rejected from MIT, so I think it was really Flash's rich parents who got him in anyway, his life pretty much unchanged. But Happy Hogan is an interesting case, because he remembers his relationship with Aunt May, but not how May entered his life. Now, at her grave, he told this random kid that, like him, he knew May through Spider-Man, so he probably still knows that she was related to Spider-Man in some way, but not how exactly. Maybe to her, Spider-Man was just a masked celebrity who supported her homeless outreach in Far From Home, but not her nephew per se. So his new memories likely involve that assignment from Tony Stark to transport this kid from Queens to Berlin, but that kid must have been masked the whole time because Happy Hogan cannot know who Spider-Man is now in this reality. But now we're getting to Peter's history with the Avengers. It would be simple enough to say that uh, Peter never joined the Avengers for anything, but that can't be the case because Spider-Man was still there with Tony Stark in the Avengers for all the events he previously did, Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame. The difference though is that Peter was now masked in all of their memories because it's not possible for Spider-Man to be completely extracted from all that history because he played too pivotal a role in Civil War, helping Team Iron Man, and then Infinity War, saving the lives of Bruce Banner and Doctor Strange and saving the Guardians from floating off of Titan. And in the end game, it was the memory of Peter Parker that inspired Tony Stark to give another thought to time travel. And it was Peter there in that final battle who passed the gauntlet from person to person. He needed to be there. And Spider-Man was there for all of it. The difference now is Peter, throughout all of that, never took off his mask. His identity remained a secret throughout all of it. And so, living Avengers like Bruce Banner, Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel, Nick Fury, everyone who was at Tony Stark's funeral, they now remember meeting a Spider-Man, but not the kid under the mask. This also goes for the press and the public. In No Way Home, after the spell, J. Jonah Jameson reports, It's been a few weeks since the fiasco with the Statue of Liberty, and Spider-Man's cultists continue to contend that the vile vigilante is a hero. But if he were a hero, he'd unmask himself and tell us who he really is. So the public has no memory of Peter Parker, but the press continues to blast Spider-Man as a vigilante involved with the death of Mysterio. So the first part of that broadcast in the Far From Home post credit scene still happened. The second part did not. This would also be the narrative of the surviving members of Team Mysterio, like William Ginter Reba, Guterman, Victoria, who would also maintain that Spider-Man, whom they don't remember unmasked, was the one who betrayed Quentin Beck. Now, would this also go for anyone off-world at the time of the spell, like the Guardians, the Skrulls, etc.? Well, yes, many of these characters did know that Peter was Spider-Man, and if Thanos' Infinity Stone magic can affect people on more than one planet at the same time, presumably so can in the runes of Koth Kaal. Peter Quill, Drax, Mantis, Nebula, Thor, and the Skrulls probably don't care that much about the kid under the Spider-Man mask anyway, but for now, he is a forgotten memory to them. Now, what about other universes? That is a trickier question. Peter Parker was not unmasked and scandalized in other realities the way he was in the MCU. If we assume that unmasking was the main action that was reversed, I don't think the implication was that this spell extends to all realities, especially when we know the Tobey Maguire continuity had its own Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange. That's pretty good. But it's taken. I would assume only the Doctor Strange of that reality can cast spells like the Runes of Kafkao that affect the characters in it. But the question we should still be left with is whether Tony Stark still knew when he was still alive in this revised history. Arguably, like with Aunt May, it doesn't really matter now that they're dead. But Stark might still have known since he was the one who found Peter Parker and designed each of his suits to be custom to him. But any records kept by Tony or by May, like their photos of Peter or any conversations they had with others about Peter, have now been erased from existence. However, at 
the end of No Way Home, Peter sews a new suit. Why not use any of these stark design suits that he had, like the Homecoming Era suit, the Far From Home suit that he made in the Fabricator on the Jet, or the Nanotech Iron Spider armor, or the hybrid suit that we see him at the end of the movie? Well, again, this is not as simple as those past suits fading from existence, because Peter needed them to help the Avengers, who all have histories inextricably linked with Spider-Man in those suits. But perhaps the biometric scans that allowed Peter to operate those suits no longer function because Peter is not registered in the software of the suits as a person named Peter Parker does not exist in reality anymore, according to the software. So there you go. That is my best explanation of the runes of Kaka. Memories of Peter faded. Evidence that supported those memories altered. But the little trinkets keeping the spark of the memory alive remain. You can support New Rockstars by checking out our merch options at NewRockstarsMerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>